Hello, everyone. Hi. Happy Thursday. We're here again. I cannot believe it. Turning up my volume. I'm coming to you live today from my clinic in New York City because I am in the office today seeing clients instead of my usual, which is on Fridays. So I'm in one of my treatment rooms right now. You can see some of our lovely acupuncture um, points and paintings. And so anyway, how are you all? I feel like, okay, here we come. People are coming on now. Hi. So today, um, fun topic, water. What to drink, how much to drink, when to drink, and then I think most importantly, what kind of water and how to protect ourselves from the toxins that are hanging out in a lot of our water, including the water we shower and bathe in. So let's get into it. Um, you know, in my first book, In Chill Out and Get Healthy, I talked about the importance of drinking half your body weight in water, in ounces a day of water. So say you're 140 pounds, that's 70 ounces of water a day. And I still pretty much think that that's a good general recommendation for everyone. But what I would say is an even more telling, you know, need for water or not with your body is your thirst level. So. If you're thirsty, you should drink. If you're not thirsty, don't force yourself. This whole rule that you need to have, I think it's eight ounces or eight glasses of water a day, so that's like 64 ounces, you know, I think is really, um, it varies. It's, it's important for some people, but for other people, not as important. And it's more important on some days for some people and not on other days. So if it's a hot, humid day or you've just gone for, you know, an intense workout, then you need more water than other days, right? That, that makes sense to us. But this thing of don't force yourself to drink water if you're not thirsty, I think is something that is often overlooked. And if we drink too much water, could we be putting unnecessary pressure or taxing our kidneys in a way that we don't need to? So I think it's important to, you know, obviously stay hydrated, you know, especially if like, you know, your skin tends to be dry or, you know, um, you tend to be parched or very thirsty. We don't, we don't want that. But once you get thirsty, it doesn't necessarily mean you're already dehydrated. It's just your body saying, I need more water. So. So it's okay to get thirsty and wait for that to be your signal to drink more. But I think the, the other side of it is just you don't need to over drink water. And, you know, of course, from a Chinese medicine perspective, we prefer water to be room temperature rather than ice cold right out of the fridge um, or with lots of ice cubes in it. We say that if water is too cold, it can slow down um, digestion and metabolism and um, it affects the system. Do you ever drink like a cold glass of water on an empty stomach and you get that like, oh, your stomach feels upset. So that's what we want to avoid too. So room temperature, even warm water, it's kind of the best for our system, which I know isn't always ideal, but something to really consider. So it's about drinking, you know, I think thereabouts of half your body weight in ounces a day. But more importantly, drinking when you're thirsty, not ignoring thirst, and then not forcing yourself to drink because you think you should, but you're not thirsty. That could be too much of a burden on your system. Um, yeah, so Jessica, what if you live where it's 100 degrees every day and crave ice water? Right, so again, these are all very general recommendations. In that situation, um, but this is what I would ask. You probably are inside in air conditioning most of the day, right? And if you're not and you're outside in that heat all day long, then hands down you need to be drinking lots of water and cool, like it being a little colder than room temperature I think is is okay and perfectly fine for you. But if you're in air conditioning for, you know, more than 50% of your day, then the general rules apply, right? So it's about how much is that 100 degree weather affecting you? And um, and also, if you're craving ice water, that tells me there's generally a little more heat in your system than probably um, most people have. And so, 
you are kind of medicating yourself in a way. You're cooling yourself down, which I don't think is the worst thing. But also think about adding something like peppermint to your water. Um, you know, I guess some fresh peppermint leaves or drinking peppermint tea, which will really help cool and hydrate at the same time. But for sure, if it's a super hot day, super humid out, or you're sweating and losing a lot of fluids, you definitely need to be hydrating. And then even hydrating with something more than water. You know, I know everybody talks about like Gatorade. I am not a huge fan of those sports drinks. Um, it's because of all the added sugar. I think if you're a professional athlete and you're burning lots of calories and need electrolytes, then the Gatorades are smart to drink once in a while or maybe, you know, a couple times a week. But if you're just the average person who's not an endurance athlete and working out intensely but need extra hydration because even like Jessica where you live I mean with losing lots of fluids you need almost more than just water I think coconut water is an amazing resource I call it nature's Gatorade so that's a great place to get all these electrolytes that you need when you lose a lot through sweating another awesome source of electrolytes is um, yes um, Aracelia I'm gonna get to that in a second actually about alkaline water and reverse osmosis um, so if you are losing lots of fluids, you know, the coconut water, I think, is a great way to hydrate and, and give back the electrolytes to your body. But I also think bone broth is one of the best ways to hydrate. And, you know, that is like 75% water. A lot of our foods are like 75% water. But it gives you all the vitamins and minerals and electrolytes that your body needs. So keep those things in mind as well. And also you can count those towards your daily intake of water because you know, they are 75% water. Another way to gauge that you're getting enough water is the color of your urine. So minus if you get like neon green urine from some of your vitamins, but I would also say that good quality vitamins shouldn't cause neon urine. So, but that's a lecture for another time. Um, but if your urine tends to be on the clear pale yellow side, you are hydrated. If your urine tends to be dark, stinky it has a, a nice odor to it it's pretty strong yellow orange color um you're not hydrated enough and you need to be drinking more water so so the real key is sure there's these general guidelines right about half your body weight in ounces a day room temperature um but what i want you to do is tune into your body how thirsty are you um, don't over drink, don't under drink, and what is the color of your urine? Also, how do you feel? Do you feel dry? Because if you do, then you might need to hydrate, but you also might need more fats in your diet. So go back and look at my Facebook Live a couple weeks ago about fats. Um, you know, so Araceli brings up a great point too of what about alkaline water or reverse osmosis water? So, yes, I mean, what, you know, and this is the bigger topic here today of what is in our drinking water and what kind of water should we be drinking is really important because most of our water these days has chlorine in it, it has fluoride in it, it has endocrine disrupting chemicals in it, it has, um, VOCs in it, which are basically chemicals, organic naturally occurring or chemicals are byproducts of, of a chemical reaction that happens. And then you're drinking that um, heavy metals. Then there's, you know, the BPAs from the plastics and the plastic drinking bottles we're, we're drinking out of. So there's, those are the bigger concerns, right? So it's, it's not just how much you're hydrating, but with what is the quality of the water you're hydrating with. So if you're going and getting alkaline water, that's awesome because most all diseases, so dis-ease, disharmony in the body, discomfort, any disease state is basically a body that's more acidic than alkaline. Our natural state is to be more alkaline. So if we drink alkaline water or water that's treated to be alkaline, it's really going to help our health and it benefits our health. So it's not always the easiest to get the alkalinizing water. You can get filters that alkalinize your water um, or you can purchase it. I think Mountain Valley is one of the best um, water products out there that is very alkaline. Everything comes in glass bottles. Um, great, great resource. And reverse osmosis system is something also. There's, there's on-the-counter ones. There's ones that you get installed in your house. But reverse osmosis is one of the best systems that you can get to get good quality water. So 
you know, I want us all to think about not just how much we're drinking, but what is the quality of the water we're drinking. And if we're buying water while we're out and about on the, you know, day to day, that we should really be getting water in glass bottles, not plastic. So the plastics are really harmful to us. The, the BPAs in the plastic um, leach into the water, then you drink that. That has an effect on your system. Um, endocrine disrupting chemicals you know it's it's not great and then at home just drinking plain old tap water again not the best because of the things like the chlorine and the fluoride and these endocrine disrupting chemicals all these things that are getting into our water supply and then we're ingesting that and that's having an effect on our health so you could go and get a reverse osmosis system. Like I said, there's some good ones um, that are on the counter. There are some under the counter ones. There's the website Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. They have a whole um, sheet on the best at home water filters that I highly recommend you all look into. I can post it later. Um, Beth, my assistant, is not on this call today, so otherwise I would normally have her post it right now. But I'll post it later on this page so you guys can check that out. And I also have an, my own Amy-approved handy cheat sheet on the best water filters. Um, anything at home, though, that basically is a charcoal, a block charcoal filter, is going to work great. So even, like, the Brita's are decent. They're, they're not... They're better than nothing. That's the way I would look at it. They're not the best, but they're better than nothing. You could do the reverse osmosis system. What we have at my house is Berkey water filter, which, um, you know, they're in like the two, $300 range, but you never really have to replace the filters and um, they sit on the counter and it's, it's gravity filtration through the charcoal filters, which gets out the chlorine and the fluoride and a lot of the other harsh chemicals that are in the water. And I love our Berkey. And so what I'll do is, you know, we're constantly just filtering water in the house. All the water we drink and cook with, it comes from the Berkey. And then I'm taking my own water bottle on the go. I either use a stainless steel container or a glass container. When I'm out and about, I try to, if I'm going to buy water, I'm buying, you know, um, water in a glass bottle. And so that's what I would urge all of you to do. And then one step further from that is to think about the water you're showering in and or bathing in or the water you're bathing your children in and you know this is also where we get major chlorine exposure is in that bath water and they say that it, it can have um, a really strong effect on our immune systems there's pesticides you know it has, it has a very strong effect on our system in a, in a negative way so what I have is, I wrote it down because I always forget the name, um, the Crystal Ball Bath Dechlorinator. I will put a link up on here as well. It's like 40 bucks, and I keep that in the bath with James, and that really helps get rid of the chlorine in there. Then there's some other chemicals in there. Chloramine is the big one that's in the bath water that something as simple as adding some vitamin C powder, so ascorbic acid, you go and buy that one teaspoon of that, you put it in the bath water, put it in like five minutes before um, the kids get in, and it will get rid of the chloramine, which is great. Another way to do it is the magnesium salts or Epsom salts. So we pretty much always bathe with Epsom salts, and we have the, the dechlorinator. Um, and for my shower, Berkey, the same people that make my water filter, sell a shower filter, which is super easy to install. It literally just goes between the pipe and the head of the shower. It's like, I don't know, 40 bucks or something, and it gets it dechlorinates the water. So I'm not then bathing myself in toxic water. So I'm super anal and conscious about the water I'm drinking, and I, then I, I should also be thinking about the water that I'm, I'm showering in, the water I'm, I'm cleaning my, my family in, right? So I'll post these things, but this is, you know, the bigger picture stuff that we want to think about. What is the quality of your water and, and what exposures are you getting from your water on a daily basis? And, you know, it, it's not to be an alarmist, but, but it is something that's very concerning because if we're trying to really combat, you know, inflammation in our body and stay away from harsh chemicals in the environment and, you know, detox our body on every level, level, then we really have to think about the water that we're exposed to everywhere we are. And, you know, and that even comes down to like the faucet and, you know, when you're cleaning dishes, so you can get the same kind of filters. But there's some great at-home filters that you can put on the faucets, which work great. The bathtub is always harder because there's really no 
filters that fit on that faucet. So you can do the shower filter and then for the tub, you just get those dechlorinator balls. They're super easy. But again, you can just try adding vitamin C and some um, magnesium salts or Epsom salts to your baths and that should take care of a lot of the chemicals because it actually deactivates them basically. Um, oh, another thing that is really helpful in the bath too to, to get rid of the chemicals is bentonite clay. So you can add a teaspoon of the clay to your bathtub and that's super easy to find. Just go on Amazon, order bentonite clay. So magnesium salt, bentonite clay, um, vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid and just add a teaspoon of that to the bath and will really help basically um, neutralize those chemicals so that they don't affect if your child is bathing in there or even yourself. And then you can get the shower filters. Um, and then the other thing to think about too is how long are you in the shower for? Um, you know, how hot does that shower need to be? I think the hotter the shower, the more the exposure to the chemicals. So, you know, to consider things like that as well. I don't want to take all our fun away. I know I love a good hot shower. So I have my Berkey shower filter and I feel good about that. And, and then at home, we have the Berkey water filter. Uh, you know, again, the reverse osmosis systems are more expensive and labor intensive to install, but worth it in the long haul. And then you just take your water with you. And then again, if you're out, you want to really be conscious of buying in plastic, I mean, glass bottles versus plastic bottles. And then if you have, if you have access to alkaline water, great. There's a lot of at-home systems that help alkalinize the water. You can add these um, salts to your water that alkalinize it. That's another way to take it up a notch. And, you know, to just to continue to be conscious of where all these chemical exposures are coming from because there are a lot of different exposures. So big things, how much water should you drink? You know, I do think they're about half your body weight in ounces a day. Ideally, um, that, you know, it's room temperature, not too, too cold because that, you know, on your system, it kind of slows down your system or shocks your system if it's too, too cold. But drink when you're thirsty. Drink if your urine's too dark. Um, if you've had an intense workout, then also restore with some electrolytes like coconut water and or bone broth. I think are great. Even like pickle juice, anything with some extra magnesium, potassium is basically what you need. Watch the Gatorades. Um, you know, they tend to just contain a lot of added sugar that your body doesn't need. And then go a little deeper and look into the quality of the water. Um, I can't recommend the Berkey water filter enough. It does take up a good amount of counter space, but it's pretty, it's stainless steel. I have them in all my offices and I have them at home. And like I said, I love it. And the Berkey shower filters, but there's a ton of different ones out there. And then what I'm using in the, in the bath for James is the crystal ball bath dechlorinator. It's about $40. I get mine from radiantlife.com. And it works great. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like he's getting less of an exposure. Um, Aquasana are good filters as well. So what you want to look for in a filter is that the, the, the charcoal filters, those are the most important ones, or it's reverse osmosis. Those are the two. So I have the charcoal ones at home. Um, but we don't currently own our, own our home. So when we do purchase, I will have a full system installed in in the, you know, the house so that all the water is filtered, shower, bath, etc. And it's not cheap, but um, yeah, to me, it's really important to look at and it's really important to do. So, so there you have it, guys. That's our talk on water today. And unfortunately, I have to cut us a little short because I have a patient in the room, on the end of the room with acupuncture needles and I have to go take them out. So I'm going to wrap up and um, send you all lots of love on this Thursday. And thanks again for tuning in. And like I said, I'll follow up and I'll post... Um, what do I have to post? The EWG water filter um, article and then links to the Berkey and the crystal ball. And I will see you guys next week. And take care. Have a wonderful week. Happy 4th of July. Holy moly. I don't know how it's July. Um, okay. I will see you guys next week. Ciao.